She's a Django developer at Potato, currently working in London. She co-founded Django Girls, a community-driven initiative that teaches Python and Django all over the world. Ola's great power in unstoppable enthusiasm and spreading the knowledge of Python and Django. Snakes, ponies, and balloons, stories of teaching Python to thousands of women. Ola Sitarska. So, hey everyone, I'm super stoked to be here today. Oh my God, it's really dark. Ola said to me yesterday that like, you can't see anyone, and that's true. <laughs> So over the years, PyBuff has been my favorite meetup in the city, and I, even though I moved to London, I still miss it dearly, and I'm super impressed and incredibly happy to see what Przemek and Konrad and Piotr and their whole team managed to build over the years with their hard work and dedication, and, and now pushed it even further with PyBuff Summit. So maybe before I start, let's thank them again for putting an amazing show during the last two days. So as Tomek said, my name is Ola Sitarska, and this is my fourth talk at PyWav. <laughs> I come from Poland, but work and live in London now at a fantastic place uh, with talented, amazing friends uh, called Potato, where we develop young applications that scale with, uh, with working with huge clients with, like Google or Skype. Um, Two years ago, together with another bunch of awesome people, uh, I also organized DjangoCon here in Warsaw <laughs> as the Django Circus. I am a board member of the Django Software Foundation and a member of the Django Core development team. Uh, but more important, importantly, uh, nine months ago, together with Ola Sandecka, we started Django Girls, which may known to, uh, be known to you as a series of workshops for women who, about Python and Django. So today we're going to talk about this. But let me start with the story first. So this is Dori. Dori attended um, the first Django Girls workshop in Berlin, and she fought with her Hungarian keyboard on Windows that didn't quite want to play nice with Python and, and specifically, I think, Django run server command. And that was like six hours of workshop. Uh, she just spent fighting with that. And we felt like she's going to give up. She's never going to do this again. It was like a terrible first experience. Uh, but after that, uh, Dori continued to learn. And today, she works as Django developer in Budapest after just uh, nine months in the workshop. Um, she is also organizes a meetup for Python developers there. She organized two Django Girls events, teaching 60 women how to code. And she coached on many Django Girls events all over Europe. We couldn't be prouder that she now calls herself a Django Girl. This is Justyna. Justyna applied for our workshop at, in Berlin because she wanted to attend. And we noticed that she already had like, wrote a couple of Django projects. And we're like, hey, this is for complete beginners, like people who, don't know, who know nothing about internet. So we said that she's very welcome, but she needs to come as a coach, not as an attendee. And since then, she fell in love with coaching other women. She organized two Django Girls workshops. She traveled all over Europe to coach at Django Girls workshops. There is another one, which is Josie. She's 13, and she attended Django Girls workshop with her mom, uh, Tina, who coded alongside her. After that, she organized Pixie Dust, which is her own workshop, in, uh, like a series of workshops in, uh, in Croatia and she taught 13 years old <laughs> how to code. Uh, she was also representing Croatia in junior Eurovision, but I think that's another story. <laughs> These are photos from the workshop uh, in Croatia. Um, Emily Karungi lives in Uganda, and she is really a badass. She is a Django dev in Uganda, and after our first workshop, she reached out to us and said uh, she wants to do this, do this there and, and teach more women in Mbale in Uganda. She helped, after that, she also had to start two more workshops in Africa, teaching more than 100 women how to code in Python. Uh, she also became a member of grants and code of conduct committee in Django Software Foundation, so she's now very actively involved with the community. This is also a photo from her workshop. And last but not least, Lacey Williams. She sent us an email three months ago to organize, because she wanted to volunteer to organize Django Girls workshop in Portland. This led her to contribute to open source because she wrote an accessibility chapter to our organizer's manual. Uh, and later, she turned that into an article at Model, Model View Culture. She's also speaking at Django Birthday this year. She became Django Software Foundation developer member and DjangoCon diversity chair in 90 days. I asked her if I can put her on slides <laughs> and kind of show her, show her as a role model, and she sent me this. 
She said that Django Girls community is supportive, receptive, generous, and grateful. The encouragement has, in three months, turned her from lurker and retweeter to an active member of the community. And she's so grateful to be part of this organization. She also sent me, after that, she sent me one more thing. I'm, I'm not entirely sure <laughs> if she still wanted me to put that here in slides, but I'm going to do this anyway. So she said that she's actually tuning up typing this. And I think when she said that, I was actually tuning up <laughs> reading what she said. And I could he fill this whole talk just with stories like that of women who attended or coached or organized Django Girls and became member of, mem members of the community and turned their, li their lives around. Uh, and I'm so humbled to know them. And this alone <laughs> makes it worth spending my all afternoons and weekends during the last nine months just working on Django Girls. So Django Girls, it all started nine months ago. For me, it was seven years into working as a developer, and I was quite tired. I was tired of being the only woman in a room. I was tired of always being asked what I am doing here. Uh, I was tired of having to prove everyone all the time that I can be a woman and a programmer at the same time. And don't get me wrong, like most of these people didn't want to hurt me, but just try to imagine working in an industry where a very little percentage of people uh, just trust that you know your stuff and all the rest need a proof that you can actually do the job you you were hired to do. Try imagine what going through your job interview every day, and not because you're actually applying for one, <laughs> but because you just come to a meetup or a conference, because you wanted to make friends. And people feel a need to examine you, you make sure you're a real programmer. Uh, it's not a problem of the tech industry alone. Just a couple of days ago, Ola Sandetska showed me uh, a reality, uh, I think that was a documentary on Netflix, about the world's best chefs. And one of the episodes featured a female chef. chef. Uh, it hit me how much her story is similar to mine. Like, you could see how all male chefs talk about uh, their passion to food and cooking. And while she also talked about that, the huge part of the episode was just dedicated to her struggle with no one believing that woman can be a chef, and her struggle having to prove herself over and over, and over again. She had to install blinds between the kitchen and uh, in the dining room because like, she didn't want to hear <laughs> the comments from men uh, who eat at her restaurant. Uh, like, hey girl, it's quite cute that for a girl you're like a really good cook. So that's what she did. So at that point, nine months ago, I was quite tired. Before that, I organized Django Con Universal, so I, I met many people and I knew many people. Um, and and still I could only like, list a number of women I know that work the same position as me, like using one of my hands, not even two, like just one. And that's why I decided to start Django Girls. That was quite a selfish reason. I just wanted to have more women working alongside me because maybe then being a woman and a programmer won't be so strange for people. And they will just accept this fact <laughs> and, and that, they, they, that if I work here, I probably can program and they will just move on with this information and I don't have to prove that to them. So the reason I wanted to start this was pretty selfish, but what happened after that was completely selfless and amazing in, in so many different ways. So we made everything we do free, and we decided to dedicate our free time to this goal without expecting anything in return. And I think, and I think we got everything <laughs> we, we could ever dream, ab dream about. Everything uh, we do is free for everyone, and in the last nine months, Django Girls grew from just me and Ola, uh, to now more than a thousand of people who attended the Django Girls event or contributed to them, organized, coached, etc. So there are two things that are, I think, I believe they're the core of what we do. The first and most important thing that the main goal of Django Girls is to organize as many Django workshops as possible to help us bring the biggest amount of women into the industry. However, we also know that we can't turn anyone, everyone into programmer in just one day. That's why the goal of the workshop is not necessarily to teach them how to code and turn them into programmers, but to get them excited about how amazing technology and what are, what are the opportunities that comes with the coding skills. We want them to show, the, uh, show how much they can build in just one day and, and share with them the most amazing feeling of, yay, I did it, and it finally works. And I think this is the perfect illustration of that. This photo is like an, um, on our event in New York City just a couple of weeks ago. So women who come to our workshop know nothing about programming. 
because so far they use their computer to, as a device to browse Facebook or check their email, and they live knowing what's H how the internet works, what's HTTP, what's a server, they know basic commands in Python, and at the end of the day, they build a blog application, everything in Django, with code uploaded to GitHub, open sourced, and ready to share with their friends because it's also deployed on the internet using Python anywhere now. We do that all in one day. It may seem like much to you, and I think <laughs> they all confirm that it's really a huge amount of knowledge that is dropped, to you, dropped on your head in one day. Uh, but we do that because we want to feel like they can actually achieve something amazing in just one day if they just continue learning and just continue to get to know more of that. Um, but besides excitement, uh, the goal is to prepare them so they can teach themselves later. We instruct our coaches to not give answers, but sh we, we, we want them to show people how they can teach themselves later by Googling, by using Stack Overflow for their own profit. We don't make shortcuts, but uh, so we don't give them like a ready environment, but we make them install every part on their own. We don't give them ready solutions, but we intentionally lead them into errors so they can, so they have to read them, they have to like them, they have to understand them, and Google for an, for an answer. Because this is the only way they're gonna teach themselves, say, themselves later. We give them the right tools for the jobs, which are the tools we use every day. Uh, so they work in the environment, virtual environment from the very beginning, and we teach them Python 3. And we introduce them to GitHub in the very first hours of the workshop. We try to strip everything from the layers of abstraction so they can really understand how it works, not just accept that this is how it works and you have to just, I just remember. Um, this is, I think, all incredibly important to set them up for success, but, um, but this crazy excitement of working in a group and together and sharing all of that and building and learning and asking questions um, about things they didn't even know, <laughs> know existed before uh, this morning and seeing uh, things slowly click uh, is what I think keeps them excited long after the event. Mm. But when the event is over, it's not the end of their adventure with Django Girls. This is where the second core thing of what we do comes to action. We work on empowering existing women who already work as developers and give them a platform to contribute, to share, to shine, as well as community that supports them. For example, we, um, the most amazing thing I think we discovered uh, when we started Django Girls is the number of women who already work in industry. And, uh, and now I get to call them my friends. <laughs> and they were just hidden somewhere in different places in the world, and they saw Django Girls and came to us telling that they love what we do and asking how they can contribute. To show how amazing all of them are, our, our volunteer Anna Osowski makes interviews with them, and these are all interviews uh, that you can find on our website and on our blog, and you can read uh, how they started coding, what's the most, uh, what they are mo most passionate about, or what they are curious about, and I think that's pretty cool. It's a real sisterhood. We support each other no matter what. We share experiences. We send each other hugs and postcards. We meet at Jungle Girls events in different cities. Um, and I, can, I can't even count how many attendees became real friends. They stayed in touch even for sometimes they don't even live in the same countries. They fly to different events together to coach and they spread the Jungle Girls mission in their cities. So on our GitHub account, you can find that we open source five materials and one website. <laughs> the, popular, the most popular resource is definitely the tutorial we use during the, our workshops. Tutorials written originally by me and Ola before our first workshop, because we were hugely dissatisfied with the current sta sta state of affairs. Um, we kind of, we we're also a little bit shocked because we didn't know that all of the resources available in the internet expect you to know what, what um, HTML or CSS is. They expect you to know what URL view database and model is. No one explains that. So we just decided to spend two weeks, in our evenings and nights, and write uh, a tutorial that is now free, open sourced, and has been read by 50,000 people, even more than that, uh, which is a number I still can't quite believe for the process, but apparently this happened. Um, because of that, it also became one of the most recommended free, reasons, free Django tutorials out there. With the help of contributor, it has been translated to four languages, 
it's definitely not your usual tutorial, and I strongly recommend you to check it out, even if you know Django already. And it's not only used by girls, <laughs> it also can be used by men. And these are recommendations from Twitter. I think this is my favorite one. It says, I am amazed by this tutorial. It just keeps working. So bite-sized and easy to understand, and hashtag I am a Django girl. I think that's my favorite. <laughs> So we also wrote an organizer's and coach's guide to make it as easy for people uh, as possible to organize events in their cities. While still carrying like, the spirit of Django Girls of excitement and fun and friendly and proactive, um, we encourage temporary tattoos <laughs> and cupcakes and balloons and funny photo booths or donuts, <laughs> for example. This makes people feel like they're in kindergarten again, like they feel treated, like they feel like we like pamper them, <laughs> and uh, this makes them more excited, and the atmosphere is always very energetic and amazing, and you just feel like they, they never want to stop coding after that. This, make it, this made it possible that in just nine months, uh, 1,225 women attended our events, which is something I never thought is possible. That's 130 women learning Django every month since we started, and it's only getting bigger and faster, and, and the speed is just wild. Our community of organizers, um, women and men who code in Django on a daily basis, grew to more than uh, 100 wonderful people now. And this exceeded our wildest expectations. But there is also a metric that I believe is the most important metric. It is the number of women who attended Django Girls events and now work as developers. We know about nine, but this is data gathered from five events out of 56 we run. So, because we don't kind of organize them personally, but through volunteers, we kind of need to ask them, hey, do you know about uh, any, any woman who got a job after the Django Girls event? So, we are planned to do that before our first birthday, so very soon. But this is at least now <laughs> that we know of, that now work as developers, which is something that makes me really proud. And me and John, uh, Ola haven't planned for Django Girls to become the thing that it is today. We plan to do just one event, this one in Berlin at EuroPython in July last year, and that's it. Like, I was already overworked. <laughs> I did so many things before that, and I was like, okay, July is going to be over, so I'm going to go take vacation, <laughs> go holidays, and I'm going to have free time to do all of the other stuff I want to do. So this quite didn't, didn't turn out <laughs> the way we wanted, because... Uh, shortly after we announced it, we received an email from Australia, and then a couple of, uh, a couple of days later from Taiwan and Nairobi in Africa. And these emails from amazing women asking, hey, how can I make it happen for a woman here? They just kept coming, kept coming, and we knew we don't have the capacity to go to all of these places. Uh, and because we still really like coding, <laughs> we like to do that and keep this job as our main job. Uh, uh, so we just uploaded everything to GitHub, uh, every single file we created, or every single thought we had, and let people use it for free. You can do uh, another event. You can do Django Cuts if you want, <laughs> just by using our, our things that are uploaded there for free with no strings attached. And in nine months, Django Girls virus has been spread to all six continents and 28 countries. And we are blessed with getting to know so many amazing women who, um, who made it happen in places that I, in the world that I didn't even know existed. And now everyone asks us, like, how would you make it happen so fast in just nine months? So here I'm going to tell you about a couple of things that I believe were the factors why Django Girls grew in this wild, wild speed. And um, hopefully these insights will help you to maybe grow a community in your city or, um, or you can apply them in some way to whatever you do. Mm -hmm. So first, the first and the most important thing is that we are doing something people really, really like and really, really love and really, really want. So I cringe every time someone, I hear someone saying, hey, it's not our problem, it's not our fault that women uh, are not, there is no woman in our community. We don't stop them from coming, they just, they are just not interested in stuff like that. They have brains wired differently. So <laughs> it's not true, by the way, if you still believe that. Um, well, it turned out that if you write on your website, hey girl, we know that IT industry is male dominated. We are women and we want to invite you and we want to show you how awesome it is. So this event is for beginners. You don't have to know anything. 
just bring your computer and if uh, and just um, we are going to teach you and you can ask any questions and it's going to be fun and safe. So it turned out that if you say that on your website, they are going to come. And for our first event in Warsaw, we received more than 400 applications for 40 places we had. So this is 10 women for one place at the workshop. Um, and it's not a single incident. It's not like Warsaw isn't magical in that, <laughs> that uh, particular uh, thing. Uh, because our events are like um, regularly, hugely oversubscribed. So it's not that women are not interested, it's just that they didn't feel invited before that. Um, and that's, I think, making something for people, like for a particular group you want to focus on, is really important. Out of this crazy excitement of all of us being in the same room, crowded room, <laughs> usually, learning completely free, uh, learn if like learning something completely new for free and feeling completely, complete freedom to make mistakes and ask questions and just not knowing what you even want to ask about, it comes something else. And I call this like a conti contagious enthusiasm. <laughs> Both me and Ola believe that enthusiasm is what makes Django Girls work. We always look on the bright side of things and try to keep Django Girls fun and friendly and positive. And we've got posts here with like huge, you go girl, <laughs> and we buy tacky gold balloons <laughs> that you can see in all the photos. And they, they take up most of the room, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. And because we know it's like all of this excitement and jumping, and because we know it's, it's just gonna spread to everyone in the room and everyone is gonna be excited. And after that, they're gonna take this excitement and turn this into something great. So this enthusiasm <laughs> made one of our attendees of Jungle Girls event in Warsaw quit her toxic job the day, a day after the workshop and she started her own company because she decided she wants to work in an environment that is fun and that is creative and like the one we created during the workshops. So, so you can always just have uh, the right to be excited and to laugh and to just do stupid things. And I believe that this is a value that goes from the top to the bottom. And if we are enthusiastic about what we do, it's gonna show and it's gonna keep going and it's gonna be passed to other people from people. And I think that's what makes Jungle Girls special. And the spirit of Jungle Girls is also well represented by the fact that we open source everything we do um, with no strings attached. You can just take it and you can make Jungle Girls events uh, or rebrand it and organize something completely different on your own. There's, there is really like nothing uh, we don't allow at the moment, at least. This makes it everyone in the organization act like more egoless, I think, and selfless. And we are incredibly happy to be surrounded by so many generous people who help us and who value the same things as we. And when we think about Django Girls, um, from the very beginning, both me and Ola wanted this to be bigger than us. And I think we <laughs> already achieved that. I don't take pride in organizing a Django Girls event, but I do have a huge pride when someone I know uh, will step up and do it, and um, because this is the only way we're gonna grow. So when I see someone like we delegate one small thing we do to someone else, and uh, he or she does that <laughs> and does it great, I'm like super happy. Like this would make me happy because the way we can empower people and they take initiative and they they kind of people are waiting for permission, but it's not really needed and and people don't realize that. And I, I'm really happy that I can kind of give them this blessing so they can do a, a go and do something amazing. And the core team of Django Girls are four people now. And even though this is a very small volunteer, volunteer team, we still take time to document every process. And we have instruction or a checklist. Uh, so there is not, not a thing that like one person is a, has a bus factor equals one. <laughs> we share every responsibility. So if by any chance I'm hit by a bus tomorrow, Django Girls is gonna strive and shine <laughs> and continue. We always think about the ways to solve a problem for everyone. So we've see, when you see that this organizer in Mexico has a problem that the same organizer in Europe has, we kind of know that we can solve it once and for all, and that's what kind of makes us, uh, makes us scale, scale, I think, much more quickly than, than otherwise. And the next thing is, if we're always trying to keep it fun and friendly in many different ways, <laughs> as you can see after all of these pictures. pictures. So we buy gold balloons and flowers and, and temporary tattoos and stickers. We play nice music during the workshop. 
with a group hugs and we try to hug the internet from, uh, from our group pictures. This makes it easier for people to go for the whole day of just coding and sitting and, and being boring. And every now and then we hear that we gave them the best day they've had in a while, and I, <laughs> I'm really happy about that. We gave them permission not to, to be goofy, to act like a, uh, like a kid again, and not feel embarrassed, because we are not. <laughs> so why, why should they? We make real friends with these people, and I think that's what excites me about this. We also keep it fun for us. After all, this is our most time-consuming hobby <laughs> at the moment. So, uh, so we want to keep it for fun for us. Like I always wanted to plan weddings, so now I get to plan events. <laughs> that's really awesome. <laughs> and I think you can totally see, see this fun and excitement, and, and that we are just like not taking ourselves too seriously if you just interact with us. For example, like people can support us financially on Patreon, and if they do, we send them like a post, like a thank you note, uh, which is handwritten <laughs> by Ola. And this takes lots of time, but we love doing that. And instead of best regards, if you send us an email, you will receive a response from us. And instead of in our signature, instead of best regards, like usually like best regards, Ola Sitarska, you will see hugs, cupcakes, and rainbows, Ola Sitarska. Or kisses, pierogi, and sunshines. <laughs> we send stuff to people, like random people who <laughs> who are writing to us. Uh, and if you tweet at us, you're going to probably be, see a rainbow of emoji in return. So this is kind of who we are. And we are not embarrassed about, about it. And we are like, we don't take ourselves so seriously, the internet at least. Um, and there is one thing we always take seriously, seriously. It's going the extra mile for people. So we even invent a saying for it. We call people who go above and beyond for someone a gummy, cur gummy bear kind of people. So these are the people and companies who, if you order a t-shirt from them, they will send you a t-shirt and a pack of gummy bears. That actually happened to me <laughs> a few weeks ago. So they are always like people who try to make your day better. And it shows in many, many ways we handwrite the thank you notes. And, and if, for example, a few days ago at Jungle Girls in Warsaw, there was, I think, there was a one person who has like a special diet requirements and we realized Organizers real, realized that we they, they can't just uh, accommodate this person, so they went out <laughs> for, to buy some more food. So this person has something to eat and doesn't have to worry about her diet. So I think you will see that this in every interaction you have with Django girls. And that's just so that kind of we care about people and we care about what we do, and we uh, I think that's something important. We care because we believe that all these little, stupid, beautiful details make a real difference in lives of people who join us. I tear up every time I hear a woman who attended, coached, or organized Jungle Girls event saying, thank you, you changed my life and gave me a nudge to do something about it, so thank you for that. Um, because at the end, it's always about the people, the little moments, the inside jokes, the hugs and kisses, and, and Jungle Girls are people who share the same values, no matter the gender, race, or age, because we are not a no, no boys allowed club in a way. So, thank you.